Hello Booktube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Juan, I am just one reader, your favorite Mexican booktuber who reads in English, and today I will be sharing with you all of the books that I read in the month of July. I got some good ones, I got some bad ones, I got some interesting ones, I got some popular ones, I got some really unfortunately overhyped ones that I just need you to run away from as quick as you can, and I got some which I need to recommend to you. So without any further ado, these are the books that I read in July. So the first book that I completed was A Line to Kill. This is book three in the Hawthorne and Horowitz series by Anthony Horowitz. What makes this series uh, in particular so special is that this is a series of crime murder mystery thrillers, but the one of the protagonists in the stories is Anthony Horowitz himself. So the author has inserted himself as a fictional character and co-protagonist in the novels. I swear to God, this series is phenomenal. This is one of the best experiences that I've had reading a series. So if you want to read good, interesting, funny, witty, well-crafted crime murder mysteries, this is a great place to, to, to go. Um, I would say that from the entire series so far, this one, book three, is actually my least favorite. Uh, just because of the nature of the crime itself, um, just the nature of the, the individual mystery in this book was not as appealing to me, it wasn't as fun or as funny as the other books in the series have been, but overall, I just the books by Anthony Horowitz in this series are phenomenal. I just love the way that Anthony Horowitz writes dialogue, character, how descriptive he is. He's just a, a craftsman. He's at the top of his game. He is writing so vividly and so perfectly, so economically, like he uses exactly the right amount of dialogue, detail, characterization, and he has great pacing. And the storytelling chops that this man has, he has accumulated for so many years that he's been writing, you can really tell that this is a master storyteller. So. This book in particular in the series, not the best one. It was like a three and a half star book for me, but still great series overall. Then I read Mariana by Monica Dickens. This is a modern classic. It's set in the 1920s, 30s. I forgot, honestly, but it's set the first decades of the 20th century. And we follow this character, Mary and she is reminiscing on her life, uh, her childhood and her formative years as a teenager in London, exploring the countryside, the family estate, you know, the place in the countryside and family life, relationships, friendships, all that good stuff. I would recommend this to people who have enjoyed Dodie Smith's I Capture the Castle, which is one of my favorite books. It's one of those amazing reading experiences that I've had in my life. And reading Mariana made me think a lot of that experience of reading I Capture the Castle. This book was warm, fuzzy. It was very easy to read. Um, I thought it would be kind of hard in terms of the language, but it was actually quite accessible and just, you know, wonderful. The chapters are long, but they, they have this effect of immersing you and embracing you almost, like enveloping you, and each chapter feels like a vignette a time in the protagonist's life and you really get the flavor, the smells, the, the sounds, the colors. It's a very cinematic experience in that way and you by the end of the book you really 
grow very fond of the character, all of the characters in this book. So this is a great time. It's a book that you want to read slowly. It's a book that you want to uh, just feel fine reading, you know, it's just a, a treat of a novel and I gave it four stars. The next book that I completed was Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. This is a big chunky book and just like Mariana, this book also follows the story of a boy's life. So we get to see again, each chapter is a vignette, a very clear cinematic, so such a cinematic um, experience because each chapter is like a, a clear cinematic visual feast, an episode in this boy's life. This boy in particular uh, is growing up in this American little town and it's like the quintessential almost Stephen King-esque kind of uh, story. We have this plethora of characters and different things that happen during this uh, summer. Um, I mean, so, well, it, the, the book is divided in seasons, so we get to see summer, autumn, uh, winter, spring, all of the summers in this boy's year. So it's a year in the life of this boy. And everything that happens has this kind of uh, mystique about it. It's such a wonderful read. It's a magical read, but not magical in an overtly fantastical way. It's just filled with that whimsy and horror that comes with being a child, um, especially in this kind of circumstances. Something happens at the beginning of the book that functions as a kind of uh, hook or, or like, a, like an exciting incident, something that sets the story in motion and, and provides like a recurring thread throughout the book of, of mystery. But the book really isn't about that mystery. It's more about the, the boy's life, therefore the title. It's about the characters, it's about the town, which is something that I really loved. And something that I really loved about this book was that it speaks to two levels of the human condition, like a very general, wide, almost universal level of human condition, but also a very specific, uh, a very specific sort of context. And I love books that can do those two levels at once. Um, it made me think of my own childhood, of the uh, mysterious folklore and the myths and the legends and the dreams and the nightmares and the anxieties that come with being a child. Um, the only thing that I didn't love about this book was sometimes the writing felt excessive to no end, but that is a personal opinion for me in terms of the writing. I usually prefer books that are more economical with the writing, books that are very carefully and tightly written, that have no fat. And here, I think Robert McCammon's style was very excessive in some ways, but it, it is a beautiful read. It's exciting. It's fun. Uh, I didn't really laugh reading this book, but it, it's a book that really gives you that sense of wonder and, and horror. Uh, that we all experienced as children. And yeah, I just love books that make you feel like you're there, like a scared little child. So I gave this book four stars. The next book that I read was The Wheel of the Many by James Eilington. This is the most disappointing book that I've read in years. Oh my God. I picked this book up actually because Everyone loves it. I am not kidding. Everyone on Fantasy Booktube is singing this book's praises like you have no idea. No one is critiquing this book enough, in my opinion. And on Goodreads, a lot of people agreed with me, so thank you, Goodreads, for validating my sorry, salty ass <laughs> yet again. But yeah, everyone loves this book. And so I was like, I need to read that. And just, you know, how can I go wrong? I mean, 
clearly this book is great. This book is pretty trashy. Trashy in terms of it is a complete waste of paper. It's a complete waste of my time and of my money. I could have read something so interesting instead of this and instead I spent an entire week well, it must have been like four days reading this pile of garbage. It's not even bad, like atrocious bad, like absurdly bad. Like I want to, I want to, it, it, it's not that bad. It's just flavorless. It's a nothing book. It's what I call a nothing book. It's a book with no flavor, no soul, no essence. There's no magic. I'm talking about the writing, of course. The, the book is fantasy, supposedly, allegedly, but it feels more like the type of fantasy that I personally do not vibe with. It felt like the, the, the magic system wanted to be almost scientific like very logical and with a lot of rules almost like brandon sanderson like that level of ugh, ridiculousness um but at the same time there was nothing really magical about the book itself or the writing or the characters the settings everything felt so flat and bland plain ugh, white uh, paper, cardboard, like no flavor at all. Um, so I, I really didn't care for the book. I read the whole thing and I wish I had DNF'd it because it, it really didn't provide me with any emotion whatsoever. Um, the plot is kind of interesting. The characters are there, but they feel completely empty and just completely forgettable, honestly. Um, the, the magic system, like I said, was just very, very uninteresting to me and vague. Um, and I just didn't care about anything or anyone. And I think it comes down to the writing. The writing felt soulless and completely dead. There's no vitality to the writing or anything in this book. So I gave it two stars. Then I read one of my favorite books of the year so far. The Twist of a Knife, which is book four in the Hawthorne and Horowitz series, again, by Anthony Horowitz. So after book three, which was kind of great, but not as great as the others, I read the fourth one, The Twist of a Knife, and I think this is my second favorite of the series after the first one. The first one is probably still my favorite just because of the novelty, um, but the this one, oh my god, the twist of a knife. This book was so much fun. It was perfect. It was everything, everything that I complained about with this one, The Wheel of the Many. Anthony Horowitz was the perfect antidote. Anthony Horowitz is writing, again, I know I already said it, but he just feels like a great, great, great craftsman. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to craft dialogue and character and plots that are so complex and so interesting, but they never, they never feel impossible to follow. Uh, it's such a riveting book. This, this mystery in particular was so amazing because it takes place uh, in the West End uh, th scene, the theater scene in London. And if you know me, Juan, I love Broadway, the West End. I love theater. I love musicals in particular. Um, I love <clears throat> stage, sh you know, things that have to do with the stage and show business, celebrity, that kind of thing. So this book... Uh, uses that kind of uh, backdrop of uh, the West End theater scene. And we follow a group of actors and actresses and theater folk who are the main suspects for this particular mystery. Oh, what is not to love about this book? I completely devoured it just in a couple sittings. I could not stop reading. It was so funny. These books are so funny and just 
<clears throat> the, the last chapter and the epilogue of this book made me almost like get emotional, but also laugh out loud. They are so funny. And I just love these characters. And yeah, I just love reading great, great writing. So this book is a five star, five out of five. Absolutely recommend this book, this series, but this one in particular is a great one. And finally, last but not least, I read Empire of Silence, which is book one in the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio. This book is one of the most mixed bags <laughs> for me. This is one of the most frustrating, uneven experiences uh, that I've had reading a book. Some of it was great, some of it was atrocious, some of the writing was pretty brilliant or very good, maybe not brilliant, but certainly good. Some of the writing was so incredibly juvenile, amateurish, borderline, what's going on? Like, what the actual fuck? Um, some of the characterization worked in terms of the main character. Well, I should say what the book is about. This is book one in the Sun Eater series. And uh, from what I gather, the series focuses on the character of Hadrian Marlowe, and he is like a destroyer of worlds. Um, he's the Sun Eater. He killed a son. This is a space opera series. It's set way, way, way ahead in the future. It's sci-fi fantasy, and um, it takes place, you know, in the deepest confines of the universe and whatever. And um, so we follow this character, and he's telling us his story, the story of his life and how he came to be who he is at the end and, and what he did and why he did it and all of those things. So it's a little bit on the lines of um, uh, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss and that kind of stuff. And it certainly is reminiscent of that. Um, so I love stories about that, you know, like following a character and, and getting to see their life stories. I love that. I love a building's romance. I love coming of age tales where we follow the, the entire lifespan of a character. So the premise was really good. And I really, really enjoyed the first part of the book, which takes place when our, our main protagonist, Hadrian, our main character, Hadrian, the protagonist, is growing up. Um, but then the story goes sort of through different phases and episodes in his life. And the book, like halfway through, the book became incredibly boring and it just really, like, everything dropped, everything sort of collapsed, which was very unfortunate, very sad. Um, the characterization, uh, especially in terms of the secondary characters, was really bad, in my opinion. I didn't care about any of the characters except for Hadrian and maybe a couple others like his parents, his brother. There's a, like a mentor figure um, that appears early on in the book. Like I said, that part of the book was pretty good. But then the characters in the, uh, the, 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 the other portion of the book, which is the majority of the book, I just found really bland. I couldn't really picture them. The dialogue was pretty bad for most of the book. Um, the settings, some of them felt very flat. Just like I couldn't really feel the world. I couldn't really see the world. It just felt very like it, 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 like it lacked substance. It lacked work. Um, the, the plot itself, I think, also suffered a lot. Um, and yet, overall, I just feel very mixed about this book because I didn't hate it. There were parts of it that I really liked, but the, the, there's other parts of this book that I felt so amateurish uh, in terms of the writing characters and all of the things that I just mentioned. Um, it was very melodramatic as well, um, which sometimes was good. Sometimes it was kind of cringy and funny. 
uh, not in a good way. So I am honestly baffled by this book. I am giving it three stars. I, I could not give it two because that would feel wrong, but it certainly doesn't deserve more than a three. So a three it is. I am very concerned about the quality of the writing. So I honestly, I feel unsure. Should I read the, the second book? People say that it gets dramatically better. So I don't know if I should make it a priority. Please let me know if you have any opinion whatsoever on this book and the rest of the Sun Eater series. Should I even bother or am I just, am I just a grumpy, salty, old bitch at this point? It could be. That, that, that could be the answer to many things, actually. But anyway, three stars. And that's my July wrap-up. So, Anthony Horowitz is winning. <laughs> that's all I can say. He's becoming my favorite author. For, for, from, you know, ever since I read Robin Hobb, I've been looking for another author that comes along with a great authorial voice and great craftsmanship and, and amazing storytelling chops and techniques and and inventiveness and whimsy and, and, and I think Anthony Horowitz is now there. I think he has now entered the, the like the top tier of, of authors and storytellers for me. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. You can hate my opinions, you can agree with them or not. I honestly just want to see what you think. Thanks for watching. I am just one reader and I'll see you on the next video.